Hey, buddy. Are you interested in a Honda CRV? No? All right. Suit yourself. All right, what's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 1999 Honda CRV. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four, and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now, I am super excited to be driving the CRV for many reasons, but two really stick out. First of all, this is a first generation CRV, which I've driven before, but this is the pre facelift. This is the first iteration of the CRV that we ever got here in the United States. And so I'm excited to talk about the history of that a little bit. But the second reason is that this has been a late labor of love by the owner and I'm excited to share that story and what this vehicle not only means to me but means to the owner and means to people abroad. But if you would like to share your vehicle with me, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. But let's get back to that B20 under the hood. Well, it only makes about 126 horsepower from the factory, which isn't anything crazy or spectacular, but it shares the same footprint with the 1.8 liter B18 that came in the Acura Integra, which made this engine really, really popular for swapping into those vehicles to give it more power and torque. This engine was designed for the CRV and the Honda step wagon of the same era, which was a Japanese sort of minivan style vehicle because they wanted something to produce more torque, but it shares a lot of parts with the B18. So it wasn't a completely new engine. The owner has had a couple issues with it. Specifically, this car eats through distributors. He's gone through two in the seven months that he's owned it. So that that is something to look out for, but overall, generally speaking, it is a pretty reliable engine in terms of other vehicles and buying a vehicle from the 90s. Like I said, Paraduit is a four-speed automatic transmission. Nothing really to write home about there or anything really crazy, although you could find these with a manual transmission. Last but not least, this particular CRV is all wheel drive. However, you could find them in front wheel drive. And this particular vehicle has had the rear drive shaft removed. So it technically is front wheel drive at the moment. And the only reason I bring that up is that the owner said that he actually got about eight miles per gallon better with taking that rear drive shaft out. So just some Something to note. So how does it feel to actually drive the very first generation of the CRV? Well, comparatively to the newer generations, this feels light and nimble. This feels like a little athlete compared to the newer stuff. The owner, Bobby, drove this out from New Jersey to Chicago for this review, and he said it did great on the highway. It sits planted. He had a tractor trailer pass him at 80 miles an hour, and the car didn't even flinch. So definitely all good things to hear about the CRV. So with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. Off to the left is my tachometer, in the center is my speedometer, and off to the right is my fuel and coolant temperature. On the steering wheel, I just have two little buttons for my horn, as well as my cruise control options. And the overall steering wheel feels nice. You're gonna recognize this from a similar year Honda Civic, of which this car not only shares a platform with, but many, many parts. Off to the left, I do have two climate control vents, as well as my cruise control button up top. Power mirror switches down below that, and then my window switches, which is really odd that Honda was doing this in this era. They actually put the window switches on the dashboard. Very, very interesting. Moving on to the door, we just have the lock and unlock because the window switches are on the dash and this nice big grab handle. Moving into the center, we do have two climate control vents as well as the hazard switch and a digital clock that no longer works. Then we have the factory Honda radio, which I love. CD player, AM, FM, that's all you need. And then we have very, very simple climate controls. Fan speed off to the left, temperature in the center, where to send it off to the right. But what I love is that the recirculating button actually has a little vehicle with the spare tire at the back. So this is 
purposeful for the Honda CRV. Very, very interesting, and I love that little detail. Then we do have an ashtray cigarette lighter, and we have pop out cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the 1999 Honda CRV. And I am very happy to report that it does, in fact, pass the big friggin' bottle test. Now, we don't get anything directly in front of the center console, and this does have an aftermarket lockable center console in the center. So this is not factory, but this is an option if you'd like to seek something like this out. Then we got to talk about the seats. Obviously, they do have seat covers on them, but they are very comfortable, and it's actually been a very pleasurable seating experience in terms of a 90s car. The 90s were an interesting era because they were either super plush luxury cars or incredibly thin economy cars when it came to the seating. Well, the CRV seems to have split those hairs pretty well in offering comfort and an economy level. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 1999 Honda CRV, and two things to note really fast knees not hitting the seat in front of me, head not hitting the ceiling. It has plenty of back space. Honda really nailed it with the interior packaging of this car because it doesn't have a very big footprint. It shares a footprint with the Honda Civic, a notoriously small automobile, and yet they've crammed so much space. Speaking of which, you might notice the seat next to me is down. That is because it actually folds up. So you pull the bottom of the seat forward and then the front of the seat comes down and it offers a flat loading floor for the cargo space, which is really, really neat. However, speaking of the loading space, let's hop out. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we'll actually start the back review up here because there's this little rear glass button. So you hit that and you come around here and you actually lift up the rear glass. So first of all, I love this feature in SUVs. I wish that all of them had it because it's so helpful if you just need to get something out of the back, you don't want it rolling out, you don't want it crashing out, whatever, that is a really, really nice feature. Again, one of my favorite features in cars. But then you come over here, you grab the handle and you open it up like so. Once we are back here, pretty decent amount of cargo space. I do get a 12 volt outlet. I can't tell if this is factory or not, but it's there, so I'm happy. And we get the holy grail down here, as everyone always asks. Boom, it does in fact have the table, which says Honda CRV on it. So you can pull this out. Some assembly is required. Bada bing, bada boom. You have a little card table or picnic table built in to your Honda CRV. Why Honda did this, I have no idea. Is it really beneficial? In the grand scheme of things, no. It's nice to have, but it's, <laughs> why? I don't know, but that is one of the cornerstones of the first generation CRV, and that makes up the floor of the cargo space. So definitely very, very cool, very adequate, and I love the back section of the CRV. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and first of all, I love this green color. You don't often see many CRVs or Older Hondas are really Hondas in general in this green. This reminds me of like the green that came on like the similar era Honda Accord. You see those in green a fair amount, but other than that, I feel like I just don't see a lot of green CRVs. Maybe the Civic and Accord, but definitely not the CRV. I think overall it's a relatively handsome vehicle too. Bobby has done an amazing job upkeeping it, waxing it, polishing it. This is a northern vehicle that sees a lot of salt and yet it's still here today, which is getting on to my final talking point. So with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a Honda CRV from 1999? Well, I want to talk about the history of this vehicle and then we'll get into my personal feelies a little bit later on. This is the first generation and first run of the Honda CRV. It was released here in the United States in 1996 for the 1997 model year after it was actually unveiled right here in Chicago at the 1996 Chicago Auto Show. Honda wanted to build an SUV. 
they wanted something for this new segment that was up and coming. Now, this isn't the first Honda SUV to ever exist. That was actually the Honda Crossroads. But the Honda Crossroads, you might be looking at this picture and adjusting your eyes, that is a Land Rover that Honda rebadged. That's right, it has a Land Rover V8, the only Honda product to ever have a V8, and it wasn't even their own. It was completely built by Land Rover, and then a Honda badge was stuck on it. But Honda is very, very good at learning. If you take anything away from Honda, they are amazing at learning. And so they learned a lot from the Honda Crossroad, even though it wasn't their own design or their own vehicle. So out of that, they produced this, the CRV, and it went on to be one of their best sellers ever. The CRV every single year sold more and more and more, peaking in the 2010s with over 300,000 units sold per year. This car is incredibly successful and it's easy to see why. They're fun, they're light, they're nimble, and they just keep going. And that's my second final talking point. This car has been far from the most reliable vehicle ever owned. The owner bought it off of a back lot and it had a lot of issues. And it still to this day has issues every so often. Just last week, he turned the key and well, nothing happened. That was a trip a couple towns over to a mechanic. That was this, that was that. The owner himself has called this vehicle a labor of love. But what's so interesting is that this car comes from New Jersey, a place of which my family is actually from, and I've always felt a sort of kinship with the state of New Jersey. And there's something interesting about the people of New Jersey. They can be the meanest mother in the world, but in my experience, they've also been the most loving. The people of New Jersey don't quit. No matter how crappy life can be, the owner of this vehicle works 16 hour shifts for an electrical company in New Jersey. He works long hours. He has two boys that he supports and loves very much. He doesn't have time for off days. He doesn't have a chance to sit down with a cold one. He has to keep going. New York is the city that never sleeps, but New Jersey is the state that doesn't quit. And neither does this car. It's nearing 200,000 miles, and it was destined for the Crusher at least a decade ago but it doesn't give up. Problems come up, headaches are given and received, but it just keeps plucking forward, it just keeps going, and even when life gets it down, this car picks itself up by its bootstraps and keeps moving forward. That's what I love about this generation of Hondas. They almost have a fearless stupidity about them. It's a talk first, ask questions later type mentality, and that's what makes this vehicle in this era of Honda so special. By the way, speaking to my point, there's a 90s Accord and a 90s Civic you're seeing in the background here in Chicago. They're still kicking it, just like this thing. Shout out to Cranford, New Jersey, and Belmar in Newark. Shout out to the owner, Bobby, for driving this thing 902 miles so I can film my silly little review. I cannot thank Bobby enough. He's been so down to earth, such a great guy. And he made this journey so this video could happen. And I am eternally grateful for that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.